I mentioned to you in the previous episode or maybe the episode before that that you can use the same steps that we did for the contact form to create a front-end form. So the difference here would be that whenever user input some data into that form, it wouldn't send an email to us, but instead it would fill out some fields in our database. So that is exactly what we are going to be doing in this quick episode. I'm just going to show you how you can use that form to enter actors into your database via the front end form so that your users that are coming to your site can enter some data to your site. For example, actors in our case. So not to type everything, I'm just going to copy out what we did for the contact form and then just uh, we are just going to modify it so that we can use it for our uh, front end form. So in, on this side, I'm on October Movies Plugins Watch Learn Movies and on this side, I'm on October Movies Plugins Watch Learn Contact Components. So I'm just going to open components right here and copy this out. So I'm just going to copy the contact form uh, to my plugins, watch, learn movies components. Uh, I created a separate plugin for uh, contact form because you can use contact form where wherever you want on your site. So it makes sense to create a specific plugin for that. But since the actors are kind of related to the movies, I'm going to create this component in my movies plugin. So first of all, I'm just going to rename uh, this directory or folder right here, contact form to be actor form. And the contact form.php, I'm going to rename to actor form.php. Okay, and now we have a set up our uh, folder structure for our new component, which is going to be an actor form for inputting actors into our database. So let's just modify our actor form uh, PHP so that we define actually a new component so that we can use it to enter actors into our database. So first of all, I'm just going to change the namespace from watch learn contact components to watch learn movies components. Next thing, uh, we can remove the mail because we are not going to be sending any emails. We can use the input, the validator, you can uh, leave it right here, also the redirect. And the class is not going to be contact form, but it's actually going to be actor form. Okay, next thing we want to change the name. So this is going to be actor form. And the description is going to be enter actors. Okay, and now we have this function right here, which is public function on send. We are going to rename it to be on save because we are not sending anything. We are saving the data to our database. On save and we can actually remove everything from here. I'm not going to do the validation and so on. You can do that yourselves. I'm just going to show you how when someone clicks send, or save in our case, it's going to create a new actor and enter a name for it and last name for it into our database. Okay, I'm going to save this for now. And uh, we can go to actors default .htm. actually actor form default .htm. So this is not going to be called your name, it's going to be called actor name. Uh, the input field uh, name of the input field can stay name. I'm just going to remove this error. Uh, your email is going to be actor last name. Okay, so we go right here and instead of this is not going to be type email, it's going to be type text. And the name is going to be last name. Uh, you can remove this. Uh, we don't need a message for that and uh, send button is not going to be called send but save. Save actor, we can remove these errors or you can leave them if you are going to do the validation for them 
and I think that's about it. We just save this. Uh, also, one thing we need to do, of course, is go to our plugin.php. So uh, watch, learn movies plugin, and we have to register that component. So the component is going to be called watch, learn movies components actor form. And it's going to be called actor form. And I think that's about it. I hope I didn't screw anything up. Let's just test it. So I'm going to go to CMS. Uh, we can create a new page that we are going to call add actors. It's going to use the default layout. And I think that's about it. I'm just going to save this. And now we can add our component to it. So movies, and now we have actor form right here. I'm just going to pull it right here and create an H2 tag. So for the title of our page. Okay, save this. And now we have our page for adding actors. Now, if I go right here and go add actor. Okay, add actors, sorry. So now we have our form for adding actors, actor name, actor last name. Of course, if I click this, nothing would happen. So IJ Ajax handler on send was not found. Of course, because we didn't uh, change the name of this to on save. I know I, I would screw something up, of course. Now we refresh the page, let's just save the actor and we get nothing because we didn't tell October what to do when someone clicks send on our form. So we are going to do that right now. So first of all, since we are going to be saving actors, uh, we can go right up here and use that actor model. So watch, learn movies, models, actor. And now we can just use it down here by writing actor, nothing else. Or if you didn't use it, you would then have to use this whole namespace. Okay, now, how do we add actors? So I am going to do it the Laravel way. Maybe there is a October way to do it, but I'm going to do it the Laravel way because I think it's pretty easy and I'm used to it. So first of all, we have to create a new instance of actor model. So to do that, we just define a variable called actor equals to new, new actor, and that's it. Okay, now we instantiated that actor class and now we can edit a name and the last name. So actor name is going to be uh, the value of the input field uh, with the name of name, of course. So we did this before when we did the contact form. So I'm just going to do input. So input get name and also the same thing would go for the last name. So last name, and now we just have to save that actor. And that's it, four lines of code. So we uh, set out, uh, set up our name, we set up our last name, and we just save the actor model, and that should be it. Let's just test this out. So actor name is going to be Don, and the last name is going to be Johnson. Actually, re let me refresh the page first. And we save the actor. Okay, so we didn't get any errors. Let's just see if we s really did save our actor. So we go to movies, actors, and as you can see, Don Johnson is right here. Okay, I just want to do one more thing right here. So it would be great if when we save the actor, the October will, will would tell us something like 
uh, the actor successfully saved or something like that actor saved whatever so we just want to get some input from october that everything went well october already has a function for this so for sending messages when something is successful or whenever you want to alert the user or give some feedback to the user when uh, he or she clicks something so we are going to use the flash method right here use flash and now we just go down here and do flash success so if uh, everything went well then display some message so actor added and now we are just going to return uh, to that page and that's it like we did for the contact form okay save this of course this is not going to be shown on our page because we didn't uh, define it right here in default that htm to display that message so i'm going to do that below the submit button so just write a, a twig tag so flash success and you end it with end flash and then you can just uh, display that message right here i'm just going to do it in the p tag so you just display message and that's it okay let us refresh the page something went wrong act from line 27 and of course i forgot the semicolon again okay save vector and since this was successful actor is added so this is the way you would use flash messages to alert user or something or give give user a feedback on something okay so this is it for this episode uh, you may be wondering, well, I'm, I don't want everyone to be able to add actors to my page, uh, actually to my website or to my application. So how do you deal with that? Well, we are going to be dealing with that in the next episode when we look at the user plugin and uh, we will use its functions to make this page accessible only to the logged in users. So remember, everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. Uh, the link will be in the description below. If you want to ask me questions, please follow me on Facebook or on Twitter and ask them there. Or you can use the con comment form uh, below this video. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you like the channel or the content I put out, uh, you can maybe subscribe to it. And I think that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.